Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2, with the perpetual underdog Terran in the blue, a normal man, and a world champion. It's Oliveira, up against his fellow world champion, the fastest player out there, the Italian Stallion. It's Rainer. A best of five Terran versus Zerg showdown between Oliveira's methodical tactics and Rainer's unending rushes. I don't know what to expect besides good games for the fans. But if you're a fan who likes good games, it would be awesome if you could like, and if you haven't made it there yet, subscribe. And Jimmy, what are we... One... Nobody actually cares about the first Reaper. One... 1,334 likes on this video, on this cast. And I'll cast another one. And I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get just a little bit better. Oliveira, three command centers. Rainer, three hatcheries. Starting things off about as macro-heavy as possible and giving us a little time to uh, look back into the past of when Oliveira on his royal road defeated Raynor in a reverse sweep, kind of paving the way for the biggest upset in StarCraft II history. After 14 years, I can't think of a more unlikely uh, championship than Oliveira taking I Am Katowice 2023. And honestly, since he's proven his spot, um, while he's still not as consistent as Clem, or has the, uh, I guess, sort of the killer instinct of Maru, at least on most days. I think Oliveira has reached that top tier of Terrans where it's not just his best day, but also his good ones, that he can put some great games out there. Rainer, on the other hand, has struggled a little bit lately. He's not had the consistency he's enjoyed in the past. I think his uh, super, like, hyper-aggressive style, where he relies almost entirely on speed and wearing down his opponent with unending assaults, I think it's uh, a little easier to prepare for. And that's why, especially in GSL, where he didn't have as much success as he would have liked, uh, he's struggled. But that doesn't mean he isn't one of the most dangerous players, currently ranked third behind Cyril and Dark in Zerg's worldwide. Essentially, e even if you know what he's going to do, that doesn't mean you can keep up with him. So, starting things off, Raynor with the most full macro style. Maz Queens and uh, plenty of creep to start things off. He has Zergling speed and nothing else so far on the gas. Oliveira. Going with the same build that you could whip out your Prima strategy guide from Wings of Liberty and pretty much get the, the gist of here, which is early Reaper Hellion into Cloak Banshee. Though I don't think Hellbats would have been on the list. As an armory on the way as well. The Brenda Bounce, the Queens, uh, zoning on both sides. Overlord wandering in, gliding. Will spot. I don't know if it saw the Cloak on the way, but... Certainly didn't see the armory, which Oliveira has hidden. Uh, the Hellions trying to keep them alive. Oliveira always does a great job of keeping those Hellions alive for long enough to put together a Hellbat push. Whether it's later on or later on with siege tanks and, and marines, or early here, where he's going to try to abuse the fact that Raynor is unlikely to have anything but queens and zerglings, neither of which stands up against the concentrated firepower of the Hellbats and Banshees. All right, the scan, a bit conspicuous there. And the Hellions, it's time. Hellbatman engaged. And that fourth base is unlikely to survive much longer. No cancel. And the Queens are, are poking and prodding and Oliveira just waddles away. And wow, drives away with the Hellions. I guess staying true and, and keeping those alive. Keep it all as tools. Because the point of the Hellbat push here is to keep control of Raynor's economy. He forced out a bunch of units. He, he took out the... He straight up took out the fourth base. Losing that hatchery. Well, try to take a third here. Did he... Did, did you... Did you go to the wrong address? The command center. Now that's a bit of an odd. Yeah. I think he tried to quickly lay down his third base, and he went to the wrong base with it. It happens. Okay. Well, hopefully they send the mail to the right place. Had some bad experiences with that. With that. Moving on. 
uh, three hatcheries on the way for Rainer. He expands to the north, the south, and into his main for a macro hatch. The Banshee is still poking and prodding, looking for something, but the Queens respectfully, politely, yet firmly asking them to leave. Baneling speed on the way. The Queens. Brenda, and why is there no creep here? I don't. Susan, could you. It's Hellbats and Banshees. It, every time. It's Hellions, Hellbats, or Banshees. It. I'm not dealing with this today. <clears throat> Infestation pit as Rainer speeds up towards Hive. Second factory for Oliver. He's not going for the uh, trademarked Octo Rex, but instead for a much heavier, um, just a little bit of McDonald's uh, mixed in with the bio army here. It's going to be Whittle Mines indeed. Drilling Claws is on the way. Something to deal with the Massling Bane, as I think Olivero has recognized it's not going to be Hydras. It's not going to be Roaches. It might be Infestors, but that's not particularly relevant yet. And now the actual fourth base is landed. Marines, Combat Shield, plus one, plus one, about to complete. The Queen's out in front, but the Siege Tank on the high ground. Planetary Fortress at the fourth. And a hive is on the way. Quite quick. Not really rushed out here, but certainly something that Oliver is going to need to respect. Or uh, put together an attack to delay. As vipers, adrenal glands, and potentially, I think in this scenario, ultralis are the biggest danger. But a handful of banelings are split off, assuming you can fit four banes in your hand. Marines still dropping out. Olivera. Rainer's at 100 drones. Wow. Starting things off very strongly. His economy about as high as you ever want it to get. As he's still mining from his main. 4,200 minerals per minute. And Spendium is going to be half the battle. Especially considering he doesn't have anything but a spawning pool for tech really. Maybe some investors. Now a Hydra's Den is on the way. The Lings and Banes, 111 Zerglings on the field. 17 Banelings. I don't think that's going to be the maximum number. Ghost Academy for Oliveira. Not too many lost... Well, Oliveira's only lost a Hellbat and six Marines so far, but that number is going to expand exponentially. There we go. The Lurker Den, Adrenal Glands. 2-2 two -two upgrades on the way and a Viper in production for Rainer. And Oliver hasn't made a lot of progress. Baneling mines are being laid down as Rainer starting to assert himself out on the map. Olivera has done a good job of kind of keeping him at bay. You don't want to be backed up against your own bases because when the Banes close in, the collateral damage is severe. But Olivera, Oh, the Queen. Get off my creep! Brenda. <clears throat> Medivacs uh, picking up. Without the Banshees to keep tabs on the north side, the creep will continue to spread, but this multi-siege push out of Oliveira looking very solid. 2-2 Two -two is about to complete for both sides. It looks like Rainer actually has a slight edge on it. Too, uh, it's effectively even between all the upgrades. A hatchery is going to be taken out. Massive Zergling counterattack to the north. Winding up. Rainer actually a little supply block. There is a tank. Oh, I love this. It's not a wall. That tank is the wall. So the Zerglings, if they go up that ramp, will actually get funneled into the tank instead of just taking down the depots. But there's only enough room for one or two of them to attack at once. The little details there from Oliveira are beautiful. But details uh, not as important as the broad strokes here. And right now, Rainer has painted with a wide brush of creep. Olivera still not intimidated. Continues to hold both sides. Meanwhile, Rainer covered it again. Lings and Banes to the right flank. Group spines and seismic spines. A chiropractor's office of spines completing. And Anitus is on the way. 66 more Zerglings. Olivera starting to clear up the creep. Hydras, Lings and Banes starting to disagree with it. But here come the lurkers. Ghosts are already on the way for Olivera. Rainer. Cheating a bit on the supply. Extractor tricking out 201. Well, hatchery tricking. Um, going over supply, guy. Planetary Fortress not repaired, though. Zerglings on top of it. 
Should be able to take it out. No, quite a toll indeed. More Zerglings going to go down. Rainer at 180 supply. Olivera knocked back to under 150. And he has plenty in production. Rainer starting to whittle down the Terran. And Olivera hasn't been able to really get anything in return. He's now got two of everything. The Noah's Ark of Terran. Widow Mines. Two Widow Mines. Two Liberators. Two Tanks. Two Marauders. And he did have two Ghosts on the way, but he added to that count. So, a little bit of all the good stuff. The Baneling Mines. Ah, uh, Rainer. Well, they don't have very much range. Medivacs. Parasitic Bomb. Quarantine's one. Yeah, well, you gotta be careful with that. Oh no, drags the medevac back. Ends up doing a lot more damage. Another command center comes down. Uh, Ling's uh, overrunning the front line. Only a couple banelings at the back. Not sure where the lurkers are. That nidus has yet to be used. There's something in the main. There's more now. A nidus is on the way. And Oliver reacting immediately. Very careful not to send everyone back, as that could also be just as bad as sending no one. Medium exposed out on the field, but the Liberators are chasing the Overseer. They technically have an anti-air attack, though conscient yeah, conscientious objectors at the moment. There we go. More on the way. Rainer buying himself some space to set up another wave. But Oliver is maxed out. Widow mine. Trying to help with this, but ends up hitting a single Zergling. Blinding cloud on the planetary, but Rainer realizes this is not the place to go. Nuclear missile is in, pro in production. 3-3 just finished up for Oliver. Snipes out a couple lurkers. Nidus into the main. He's not responding to this one. The SCVs. Oh, he's too late. The SCVs are too late. The lurkers will pull out. Mm, yeah, the lurkers think better of it. The Venn diagram of freedom overlapping. Rainer. On the field, trying to overrun some of the tanks. We'll get one or two. Though Olivera projecting defense in depth here. Has multiple layers of, like an onion of Terran. Makes you cry. Hmm. The Terrans contribute. More command centers on the way. There are four biddles right now. Not quite enough to continually scan when he wants it. Raynor's creep has been driven back somewhat. Usually you can really tell the state of the game by the state of the creep, as that's how much map control nuclear missile is launched. Over to the um, 8.35 p.m. base. It might, or a.m. No, p.m. Definitely p.m. These are gamers. Softens it up. A bit... <laughs> Kind of just throwing it out there. I think more for the distraction as actions per minute is good, but attention is a more valuable resource at this stage of the game. Both of them are incredibly fast. Rainer averaging 600 APM. Oliveira 440 right now, which is about the same as Clem does, for reference. Another command center, Planetary Fortress, is going to be assaulted. The Banelings... Taking their time rolling into the SCVs, but eventually we'll take it out. The ghost count, damn high, but Olivera's attack to the north will overrun two hatcheries with the price of one. Olivera's starting to lose some of his economy, but Rainer... Oh, and a Ninus gets into the main. Finally, the lurkers find an opportunity. Olivera, his liberators, 28 SCVs are dead, but the drone's starting to suffer the price as well. Lurkers. Ghosts are coming up. There's no detection for them. Another night is attempted. A single infester out on the field. Widow mine burrowed. They try to keep... Oh, but there's an infester at the back. There's no ghosts here quite yet. This is the opportunity. You gotta be careful of using it too early. As otherwise it'll just die when trying to pop out. More lurkers on the way. Nidus does make it out. The lurkers... Siege tanks in position, but more! More marines going to be eviscerated. The Widow Mine is dealt with. Rainer dipping on supply, but but Olivera down to 180 and doesn't have much in the bank. Rainer is winning the War of Attrition, though not by much. The EMP was thrown out there. Infester standing by. Changelings. Well, anything to keep throwing Nidises at the back. The Widow Mines get a chunk. But for the most part, 
Not the ones they're looking for. Really want the Banelings at this stage. Another Lurker out there. How many Orbitals are left? Still only four of them. Struggling to keep up on the, the scans he needs across the board. Oliver's maxed out, but without anything in the bank, Rainer can refill. The Infester, right on the edge of the scan. And right now, Oliver's one bad fungal away from disaster. Another Nidus. And there it is, but the Infester dies before it can whip the fungal out. The scan was just in time. He scanned on top of his army, I think suspecting foul play. As at this stage of the game, with this many ghosts on the field, the only way you're going to bust them is with the Festers. Blinding Cloud, but this Terran army. That's a lot to deal with. The base, going to be isolated. A lot of drones will be taken out with it. Raynor has some to spare, but we're running out of bases on the map. Lurkers at the back. Siege tank in range. Another drop coming through. Zerglings will overrun it. Try to target. Gets a couple out of there. The Lurkers on the edge actually hitting the SCVs on the low ground. Raynor keeping Oliveira busy. Gonna take out a couple more tanks. A costly exchange for both sides. A oh, full energy ghost take it out on the high ground. This battle has gone on for four minutes straight. A hundred snipes. But overall, well, Oliver has taken a more cost-effective fight over the last four minutes. But Raynor still has more in the bank. Overall, he's mined 12,000 more minerals and over a thousand more gas. Will that bank hold out? Oliver is getting pretty desperate for mineral patches as the battle finally ended for the first time. So whenever something doesn't die for like 15 seconds is when the battle uh, starts. Yes, indeed. We've got to do one. I've never quite... It's very rare to see over two minutes straight, even in the most action-packed games. Four minutes in a row. But Raynor has a tendency to have these kind of games especially. And again, he just won't stop. He's go... At, at some point, it's just going to end. The EMP lands. The question is, who has anything left? at the end. Oliveira is dipping in supply. Raynor, also his bank is draining. Raynor is trying to drag Oliveira down with him. Sink or swim here on Oceanborn. What a game one, by the way. We're just getting started. <sighs> but things slowing down just a little bit. Raynor does not want to let this game slow down too much. He does not want to let Oliveira build up the ghosts and his defenses again. He's just regrouping for- what- what am I watching? Don't mind me! And he burrows the leg after killing the depot. Rainer actually paying attention to the ling, or maybe at a shift key- I don't- either way. We are slowing things down, which is dangerous for Rainer, but kind of required for Olivera. If Raynor can keep Oliveira off any new bases, the main's gone. The natural's mining out. The third base is pretty much gone as well. There's only so many resources left that can be easily accessed. Oliveira. He's at a... Well, the army supply is still incredibly dangerous. Twelve ghosts. Seven siege tanks. Eleven mines. There's an infester underneath here. And the bio army's good. Oh, and he... It just dies to a tank. Well, and a couple shots from Marauders. It's really an art form with those Infestors. Marines go spinning. <clears throat> Four more ghosts on the way. No, the Viper! Oh, Rainer losing key units. The ghost count is building up yet again. And as it does so, it gets harder and harder. To He, he needs the Infestors. To be part of this. Rainer's bank is almost drained here. He's running out of options that aren't infestors now. As he has almost he has a hundred minerals and forty four hundred gas. He may be drag kicking and screaming into a more infestor heavy composition. And Olivera survived so far. There's still another infestor underneath there. The widow mine. The Infestor wanders into a double scan. 
I don't know if that was a misclick or he has it on rapid fire. It's possible. Oliver takes another base. His main command center left a while ago. I believe that's his main now. At the six o'clock position. About Rainer. Seems like he's running out of steam. Eight hundred and twenty-six Zerglings. Seventy-four Banes, and that's just the ones that were taken out before they could attack. There's still a hundred lings on the field. Eighty-nine, to be specific. He unburrows and morphs of Banes. There's three Infestors scattered throughout. Oliver has survived. And now he's starting to claw his way back into it. Plus three mains aren't enough. Another Nidus. How many? 19 Nidus worms attempted. Oh, but the ghosts. Get some snipes off the tour before retreating to the tank line. Another few dozen Zerglings taken out. 16 ghosts on the field. Another wave of Nidus. And another hatchery taken down. Rainer himself is starting to really... Well, he's running out of places to mine from. Some of the drones on the run, down to 65 drones. Not that there's really that many opportunities to use them. Trying to drop a Nidus on top of the tank. Olivera, with that base at the 6 o'clock, becoming a lot more comfortable with this position. If Rainer wasn't able to close it out with a 40 supply lead... I don't know if he's going to be able to close it out. Down. 20. <laughs> oh, the siege tank also killed the mine, which... That's something. Liberator sieges up. Desert links. Overrun everything on the ground. Spore crawler takes out the Liberator. The drones and infestors are sharking in. Many of the ghosts here. Not all, though. Very important. All the ghosts somewhat spread out. Anitis at the back. Rainer even has some infestors waiting for their opportunity. The reinforcing Nidus. The lurkers pop out. He scans on top of his army. Oliveira understands really the only way that Rainer's going to deal with this ghost ball is with those burrowed infestors, but with enough orbitals, he can preempt it. I wouldn't be surprised to see him lay down a couple turrets as well. The ghost staggered lines of fire. He doesn't scan on top. He, now he does. He sees him. Oliveira. Preempting. And now, Rainer. He's starting to get desperate. Oliveira's turned this around, and now he's grinding him down. This is just not the army he needs. Anitis gets through. Behind the defenses. The snipes lining up. He cloaks the ghosts. Forces the overseer's foe, but there's nothing left to deal with it. There's no units. The supply plummets. The parasitic bomb is not enough. The hydras are gunned down. There's no more detection, and Olivera survives. 1,073 Zerglings. Only 37 Hydra seems low, but at the end of the day, Rainer just does not have enough. And Olivera holds on. It looked dicey for a moment, but Olivera kept his cool, kept his patience, and he holds. Rainer just threw too much up against the ghost. Couldn't quite find the opportunity. It's a little map dependent. That Oceanborn, when things get bogged down, it's very hard to find an angle. And I think that's why Rainer was so reliant on the Nidus Worms. Just trying to get anything by. But he's going to try a little harder this time. 
as we go into game two on Golden Nora, Rainer has decided a spawning pool first is the choice. But no gas, so just a uh, command center delay or just sort of counterattack build. Yeah. It's so tough. Like, when do you slow down is the call to make. That's the hard part. Do you sit back and try to play this War of Attrition? And uh, it looked like Raynor just one fight too many went a little too poorly. And Oliveira just solidified his position. I also really love how he sat. It, it, it's kind of weird to say, but the way he aggressively turtled. He had a planetary on the high ground in the middle of the map. He had multiple Widow Mines actually acting like a minefield. Uh, siege tanks scattered throughout. Just a little bit of everything everywhere. So that way, by the time those units got overrun, which is very difficult to do quickly, he could bring the rest of his forces to bear. So Oliveira with a strategic... Um, a very strategic game. Which outdoes Rainer's tactics this time around. Did Rainer or did Oliver SCV scout? He did. He saw the hatchery timing, which is why this Reaper is sitting at home. So a lot of Terrans do not SCV scout, and probably two or three out of four times they just get a little bit more ahead for it. But Olivera covering his bases, literally and figuratively. That SCV scout will make sure his command center finishes in a timely manner. He may end up losing this one SCV, and he really doesn't want to lose the, the Reaper itself. The SCV just beat the, the Zergling there. Make sure that the guns are still working. Test them on the uh, supply depot. But yeah, why not? It, it is one of my very many pet peeves. At some, at some point, we'll make a list, or a manifesto, more likely. Where... The unwillingness to SCV scout. Because, well, if you SCV scout, then your build won't be quite as tight. You'll have slightly less minerals. Yes, but you also have slightly less minerals if you're not mining from your second base. Because six Zerglings slipped by before your Reaper could see anything. That also uh, can be troublesome. So... Speaking of Zerglings, a few more on the way. Zergling speed. Grab your emotional support, Zerglings. All right, they need it after this series. Raynor just lost more Zerglings than most players make in their entire careers. Like Winter, that's... Don't be ridiculous. I haven't played any. Well, glad you enjoyed. Like and subscribe. Zerg Wars doesn't count. Actually, it counts a little bit. It's also very sad. Anyways, um... <clears throat> That is a uncomfortable amount of Zerglings. Well, it depends, but that is a lot more Zerglings than you expect to see. Raynor going to do an advanced version of the same thing he just did. Which is the Zergling counter early on. Going to try to catch Olivera off guard. Grabs the Reaper, takes it out. But it's Cyclones. He went with a double Cyclone. Which... The amount of Zerglings here, it's not going to do anything. In fact, these Zerglings, I think, are, are to shut down any sort of early aggression, but Oliveira has countered that by simply not doing any early aggression. And now, well... Raynor in a bit of an awkward spot. He doesn't have a massive lead in workers. He's adding more. But he was relying, I think, somewhat on uh, catching Oliveira off guard. But now, I think he's going to be forced into even more. He's actually not making any more lead. He makes another round of drones. Despite the army that's coming across the map. Now starting the length, he's going to be relying heavily on the queens here. Cyclones, somewhat helpful against the Queens as well. As that lock-on can help out range. 
decent DPS uh, when backed up by the Marines against the Zerglings. Raynor attempting a fourth base. In a precarious position. Wouldn't be the least bit surprised to see him double expand here. Lair just now starting. That SCV caught on the outside of the wall in. But... Queens. Ready to shut things down. Raynor continually building up Zerglings. He's only at 57 drops. So he, he's... He's really looking to catch Oliveira out. Um, with way more lings than you'd expect to see at this stage. Eats a mine hit. The single ling. Well, the Marines, the Cyclones getting involved, but the Queens are more than enough. And they drive the medevacs back. Rainer is keeping his guards close to his chest now. Well, not particularly close. And Oliver has expanded to the linear base instead of the third. He doesn't have any siege tanks to protect the high ground. So he's gone for the base on the other side and, and now is walling off with a commence. I don't think that's an outright wall, but it's quite a choke point indeed. I'll keep in control of the creep. And again, Olivera demonstrating a, a strategic understanding of the matchup. Whereas Raynor is, is trying to catch him off guard. He's researching ranged attack upgrades. Is that intentional? He's getting plus one rate. He doesn't have a Hydra then. Obviously the Queens can appreciate that. Sharpen their knitting needles, but... I, I have to assume he's going to add a Hydra den momentarily. And go for that Hydraling Bane style. Now 84 drones, but Oliver sitting on 71 SCVs. How many... Just five racks for now, but adding in a bunch of Widow Mines. Drilling Claws is on the way. I'm still scratching my head about that plus one ranged attack. The melee attack upgrades are very important for the Ling Bane. So delaying them at all is potentially painful. And the Widow Mines blunt the force of the Zerglings and the Banelings. And now the Queens are called into the front. The Banelings closing in, but the Medivacs are still standing by. Gets a few more. Eats a few. They'll expect some of us in the wreckage, brothers. Another Marine taken out, but Olivera just keeping control of the edge of the map. And... Put Susan in front. She can take a pounding, if you know what I mean. Brenda, that's inappropriate. I know. <clears throat> Liberator, the back of the fourth. And Oliveira acting like the Zerg right now as Raynor tries to scramble on all sides. I have to think, I don't know, maybe grid hotkeys? Oh no. Widowmine takes a bite. There's the Hydras on the way now. And Raynor's holding. 101 drones! Just had to beat his record. Uh, the Marines are still keeping everything at bay, and he targets the Banelings. Thins them out. Now plus two. Queens will take out the Liberator. Not like Rainer's hurting for drones. He's he's on five bases. Oliver's taking a fourth base of his own. But, well, that ranged attack upgrade now going to be valuable. Starts the second one. He's going to be leaning heavily on the Hydras, it seems. Joining with the Queens here. The Zerglings, though, eating big hits from the Widow Mines. But wait, there's more. Most well, so of the Zerglings are taken out. The Banelings are rolling in, but Olivera is still keeping track of everything here. We're going to go to the Olivera action camp and see how he keeps up with this. Meanwhile, Widow Mines burrowing. Drop set up on the other side. And continually rallying Marines and Marauders across. In fact, adding a lot of Marauders in. Uh, a key aspect of this. I don't know if he has concussive shells ready. But maybe anticipating those later games, but things are starting to fall apart. Wanders into a bunch of Hydra Lang Bane. And now back to Rainer's side of things. Trying to set up, preemptively setting up. He knows there's an army out there. 
but just gonna try to put that base wherever he can. Get something done. Clears up a mine. Back to everyone. Mines uh, jammed into the corners. But Rainer, while he's been driven back, he's at 104 drones. So, in fact, that's arguably too many at this stage. As his army supply is quite limited because of it. He can, he's 107. Okay, now I'm comfortable saying it's too many. Your drone count is like your body temperature. Okay, at 98 is a very, very good number. Anything above that, it's dangerous. Anything too far below that, you know what's cooler than being cool? Ice cold. All right, all right. Now, Hydra's, Lings, and Bane's coming together. And Oliveira, with just a small portion of his army, trying to engage. But the Widow Mine's doing almost as much damage as the Hydraling Bane itself. Oliveira takes out four Marines. And most of the Metavacs are here, actually. He's got 11 Metavacs, starting to add ghosts into the mix. Lurker Den finally on the way. Raynor has been under so much pressure, he's only now getting the hive. Burrowed Bane's out on the field. Well, under the field, very technically, if you want to be an annoying, pedantic nerd. So, I'll see you in the comments. Plus three infantry weapons is done. Liberators, ghosts, widow mines all coming together. And can Raynor... Can Raynor find the fights he needs? Before the Terran, not really death ball, but end game composition comes together. As uh, he's maxed out, he's got plenty of economy. It just comes down to whether he can take the fights. Tries to drag the Widowmine in, is successful, but does need more overseers. The overlapping liberators helping to backstop the push. And Oliver just keeping the pressure on. A drop comes into the bottom left corner. The gold base, a golden aura. Liberator goes into the spore. Fainlings actually split against the mine. Surprisingly effective. A bunch of, of damage onto the Metavax. I think some Widow Mines hit it. The base was taken out. The drop was chased away, but the damage was done. The hatchery is dead and has to be rebuilt. Oh. Infantry armor level 3 about to complete. As Rainer does not really have any hive tech online yet. Oliveira now is getting towards that, that late game upgrade potential with the right composition. There are some burrowed banes underneath though, looking for an opportunity, hits one set. Meanwhile, losing a planetary on the left flank, Raynor strikes back for now. And the banelings gets another chunk of Marines. I don't even know if Oliveira noticed. He scans forward. Killing four or five Marines is not enough to really blunt the effects of this push. And the hatchery is taken down. Rainer's down to four bases. He's running out of opportunities fast. He still has 96 drones, but nowhere to really mine from. At least with about half of them. The main base is starting to mine out. The gas is going to be drying up momentarily. As well. Oliveira picks up. Now, this is a bit dramatic. And he debates whether or not his name is Beyun. The Liberator's trying to create a beachhead here. Will help out. Actually does a great job of slowing down the Hydras. He unleashes the snipes. And Oliveira manages to secure a landing zone for his troops and uses that to again take a victory. And the pressure continues to mount. Rainer, despite his massive drone count and despite his economy overall, just doesn't have the unit composition. He doesn't have the Vipers. He doesn't have the Lurkers. Though, this drop is looking a little more dicey. A full Metavac is taken down, and there were several ghosts in there. The ghost count reduced to six here, and Raynor has 14 Lurkers on the way. Those Bane Mines look super weird from this angle. <laughs> yeah! Kill me! That's your job, Billy. I mean, like, sooner rather than later. Game again, slowing down. The Whittle Mine Field <laughs> at the gold base. Nidus Lurkers. Rainer has not really been able to counterattack at any point. Multiple times it seemed like he had the Zerglings to attempt it, but... 
Never found a successful opportunity. The lurker count is so damn high. The problem is there's already ghosts and liberators on the field. The Marines will fall back. But the ghosts line up their shots and there's no detection. A knight is at the back though. Rainer had it filled up with lurkers. And is there anything to actually respond to this in the main? Oh, look, they're forced into kind of a base trade here. Parasitic bomb on multiple medevacs. They're, the rest are pretty much out of energy. The Zerglings trying to help, but the bio army is still tearing through everything here. Consuming at point blank. The fight is happening just off to the side. Meanwhile, the main base of Olivera Lurkers throughout it, multiple Nidases. The orbital's burning. The Widow Mine's helping out, but Olivera dips under 150 supply. The ghosts are able to cloak, but taking some incidental inter interruptions as the lurkers fire at everything nearby. And he gets the orbital, the orbital count, down to four. Still enough, but for how long? Rainer's taken back the initiative. He's been able to drive Olivera back into his base which gives him very, very important time. He's getting the gold. He's got another base. He's retaking his, we'll call it a fourth, maybe a fifth. The Liberators and the Ghosts will close in and knock out the Lurkers at the natural. And Raynor is given a much needed reprieve. Carves it out with his Lurkers. And Olivera will have to reset, regroup, and uh, reassess the situation. Hydras, Mercus, Adrenal Glands. Adrenal Glands wasn't done? Uh, pretty significant. A moderate to severe error there. Though Zerglings haven't really had much opportunity to actually get damage done on their own, to be fair. Another orbital. Lurkers to the right flank. On top, he's losing SCVs. Up against Lurkers, it's much like against the Ghost Liberator. This is a momentum-based army. If you don't have the attention to split between all sides, they're just gonna keep taking slices. And eventually, there's not too many left. Rainer has overrun the third. Rainer has pushed back at the fourth. There's another base in the top right corner, but Olivera is now his production is beset by lurkers the main base was already thinned out the natural is under attack the vipers are reinforcing there's still a lurker up to the top right corner a single medevac drop is sent out trying to get some sort of damage done and so far doing enough to keep rainer at bay his reinforcements aren't coming across the map but the lurkers are closing in he can yank the liberators out into the hydras does so takes down both Finally, the Lurker's taken out. Olivera going for a desperate base trade. And chasing down the Queens. Olivera is now supply blocked at 132 over 115. The vast majority of his army is now on the other side of the map in autumn colors. The Vipers, though, for Raynor and many of his Lurkers splitting against the Banes. Any amount of Lurkers makes this very difficult. There's not enough here. And GG. Raynor takes it back. He's able to turn it on its head. Wow, M beautifully done by Raynor to retake the momentum. It looked like he was going to get ground down yet again, but not this time. Raynor strikes back. He's able to regain the momentum, and Oliveira unable to recover. <sighs> what a... Uh slugfest a brawl it really comes down to who's able to keep up that time around that's what Raynor was trying to do in game one and didn't quite succeed he was trying to get to a position where Oliveira had to continue repeatedly and uh, inevitably scrambling back until there was nothing left but, well, the ashes. But game one on Oceanborn, Olivera was able to box out enough of those Nidases, enough of those Lurker attacks. Somewhat map-dependent, I think. But he was able to deflect enough 
that Rainer ran out uh, effectively of money before uh, he was able to get that sort of damage done. Now, here's the thing. Any one of those attacks from either side, from Oliveira or Rainer, those are armies that win games. 15 lurkers with any amount of vipers, 510 ghosts with plenty of bio and liberators. These are game winning armies. And again and again, they go up against each other. And this time around, Rainer uh, is the last one standing. Again, though. Three orbitals, or, or I'm sorry, they're going to be orbitals, but three command centers from Oliveira. Rainer not trying another. Spawning pool first. It seems like the uh, early Zergling floods that Rainer was angling towards. And you know what? I was confused about the ranged attack, but I think it paid off. He was incredibly reliant on the, the Lurkers, the Hydras, and that ranged attack, very important for him in order to take down, especially Marines and Marauders with Medivacs. You don't want them healing up too much beforehand or between the shots. You need to actually get the down. Okay, all right, guys. Stop flirting and just do it already. Bounces the queen. Come back here, young man. <laughs> Aliens come out. It's gonna be Cloak Banshee back to basics. Well, the cloak is not guaranteed. The Banshee, and he's starting Interference Mage. I like how he starts it. So, a lot of players will start it when they think it's about to be scouted in order to uh, fake out the Overlord or the Zergling or whatever comes in. But Olivera's just starting it, cancels it. But just in case an Overlord or something happens in, it really sells the idea. He keeps canceling and restarting because that way the tech lab looks like it's upgrading to the Overlord, which is, well, he knows it's there. Just not exactly sure when it will come in. Now, right around that 420 mark, you get a look at everything that's going on. Whether he's going to be blazing a trail with Hellions or uh, trying something with Banshees. Will he believe him, though? Does he call the bluff? Of course, Raynor does not have the little fancy icons we do here. Uh, all he knows is that Tech Lab is upgrading. So, Lair has already started. I like how he's still doing it. Like, at some point, okay, you've sold him on the idea. There's no more, there's no more overlords coming in. But, you know, at this rate, he's going to end up finishing Interference Matrix. There we go, there's the kids. Poking at the creep. Engineering bays will be significantly quicker. Significantly quicker than the Evo Chambers of Rainer, who's opted for that quick lair. He was already headed towards the lair before the Overlord scouted the cloak or not so cloak banshees. But he hasn't opted for any lair tech yet. Usually you'd see at least fan link speed. Gonna make sure he has his upgrades. <clears throat> Overseer's on the way, just in case. Oh yeah, 1-1 one, one starts, Rainer. Now we see. The Hydra Ling Bane worked out into the Lurkers later on. He survived long enough against the Onslaught of Terran. Ah, here we go. The Octo Rex. Oliveira adding three more barracks on, which he w is unlikely to put add-ons, but instead use this in order to pump out just a ridiculous amount of Marines and flood the field with enough manpower in order to ideally uh, grind down the Zerg before they have anything resembling Hive tech. The key to this is hitting before Hive kicks in. So the fastest Hive tech usually is eight minutes minimum. And Raynor isn't even close to that. And 
as in the hive is finishing around eight minutes. So the key to this build is that by about that eight minute mark is when you're starting to two, you've got enough production and you're maxing out by around nine. In fact, it can be even quicker if you're on point, but I think, yeah, Oliver got a little supply block there. There's the infestation pit from Rainer. So it's gonna come down to timing, as it always does, but more so than usual with this. He's cut SCVs at 65. It's actually a little higher than usual. Building a dozen Marines at a time. And here we go. The Banshees now wishing... Well, I don't think Cloak would help him there. Oliver moving out. Burrow's on the way. Hive begins. And Oliver is marching. The siege tanks starting. He's working his way through the rocks here. 170 supply apiece. Rainer with a lot more dr 88 drones, full four base saturation. Big circling counterattack though. Olivero doesn't have that much at home to defend. And in fact, the door is open and the Zerglings will get in. He sieges up a tank on the ramp. Meanwhile, actually splitting out on the field. Rainer trying to take advantage of Olivero's momentary lapse, but he's paying attention to the front line. Thing is though, 30 SCVs dead, 32. The engineering bay is under attack. Oliver just pressing through, going for the kill. The Queens out in front, trying to hold a little bit longer. He loses the plus two attack, so so much for that timing of any sort. It's do or die now for Olivera, as he has no economy. He has no home to go back to. The natural's been gutted. The third base has nothing left. He's down to 21 SCVs, but Rainer still has to break this army. There's some, some Hellbats. The creep is receding. The army supply is still in favor of the Terran. The Baneling Nest is taken down. And while Hive is done, Rainer's putting everything into crushing this. He needs to go before the reinforcements arrive, and here we are. Baneling's rolling in from the north and from the south. The Marines are splitting. The Hellbats taking a huge amount of damage. Save some of the Marines. Reinforcements have arrived in just in the nick of time. And there's no more. There's one last Baneling. He's tearing through the last Queens. The Overlords. Everything's in retreat. Drones on the run. The Baneling Nest has been rebuilt. But Rainer doesn't have enough left. More Matavags headed across. Another round of Banelings has been produced, but that plus two armor finished on the engineering bay that survived. And while he's on borrowed time, he's barely able to financially recover from this. Olivera still has the army supply as Rainer scrambles in with the Banes. Great target fire from the tank, and the last Banelings are cleaned up. The second Baneling nest, and Olivera heads to match point. He pulled the trigger on the attack. I actually, I want to go back and look at that moment from both sides because this is the hardest part. This is the difference between your average Grandmaster and the best. It's the moment when you realize the game is about to come apart. He says, oh, it's bad. Sieges up a tank and... Bit, like beautiful split to react he just he's the third's gone the natural's gone but he held the line it's bad it's bad focus at the front that moment the fact he was able to keep just enough alive is what carries him through and now puts him on match point <sighs> The, the shortest game so far, but by no means, uh, not, uh, no, no means a walkover. Oliveira, if he doesn't win with that push, almost certainly loses the game. Even with mules, even with medevacs, Rainer has quadrupled the drones. He may lose a base, but he can rebuild and overrun. Rainer gambled a lot on the counter. And it just barely doesn't take it home. And now it's time. Let's see what else he has left. We're going in Alcyone. 
and it looked like a good one, too. I don't think Raynor expected that many tanks and marines to survive the first wave, but Olivera's target fire with the tanks was immaculate. And that split-second split, which, now that I say it out loud, is a very dumb sentence that probably could have been phrased better. But, unlike the efficiency of the split that Olivera did, if he had focused for one more second at home in trying to do damage control, he would have lost probably 50% more marines. But he, he decided to cut... He, he gave up on saving any more of his base in order to execute that fight. Which could very well have been the wrong call. But he committed to it and made it work. I think Raynor's up against someone just like himself. Raynor is also a very decisive player. As you can tell from this series so far, when he commits to something, he does it with everything he has. Like, that counterattack was a huge amount of his army, but he went for it. He really thrived, and that's why Raynor, despite his less, um, like, late-game style, his more very mid-game attrition style, that's why no one can keep up besides a single-digit number of players. Even when he plays Protoss, he overwhelms his opponent with just a flurry of attacks that, if you hesitate, will kill you. But Olivera did not stutter. Well, he did, but metaphorically. Sir! Sir! I'd like to come back, young man. Come back. Where, where'd he go? Ah, sh hmm. Queens will drive out the Reaper. It's going to be Hellion Banshee again. It served him well. We'll see if he fakes the cloak. Or maybe ups. It looks like he's going for actual cloak. That is the only... That is the only difference in the build. Is clo to cloak or not to cloak? That is the question. The threat of cloak is already usually... Yeah, he's, he's fake cloaking here. As the Overlord comes in... Interference Matrix is the choice because it's it's cheaper. 50-50 compared to 100-100 for Cloak itself. It, Raynor didn't get close enough to get faked out. Olivera didn't hold back with his Marine, so that way we would see the tech lab. Banshee is complete. Lair now on the way. Honestly, if Cloak had been the actual choice, I think... There was an opportunity to really make uh, a lot of progress with it. But Oliveira, throughout this series, has shown he goes for the high percentage plays. Only when Raynor forces his hand has he, he taken the riskier path. Ugh, exhausting. Fourth base hit by the Banshee. Hellion staying alive. Just because just I can't fly anymore doesn't mean you need to be so rude. All right. This is the Hatchery Owners Association. The HOA would like to respectfully ask you to fuck off. Brenda! This is... You're gonna get demonetized! Gonna, no, it wasn't in the first five minutes of the video. It's fine. As long as enough people like and subscribe. Real meta, Brenda. Hellion's getting overrun. But the Zerglings would be incinerated first. Did he lose a single... Oh my god. Well, he did lose a Banshee, so... That's something. But keeping those Hellions and soon-to-be Hellbats alive... 
taking advantage of the new uh, discounted armory. Infestation pit is on the way for Rainer. No, oh, armory's finishing up. Tunneling claws? All right. That is... Does he have burrow? No, he misclicked speed. Oh, Rainer, no. Unless he's a super genius, and I don't understand it. He, he, he certainly misclicked speed. Oh, no, that's not good. Anyways, here come the Hellbats. Things are heating up. Corrosive bile onto the tank, but he only has two Ravagers. And Olivera's just grinding through, but Raynor has a lot of reinforcements, and he's taking the goal. Uh, finally, another Corrosive Bow comes through. Where's the combat shield? Quite late. Raynor... Just, well, none of those units have been delivered yet. The Marine's still standing their ground. Another tank siege is up. No, not like this. He's not just going to break through here. There's not enough Marines. He should be able to clean this up. The medevac finally goes down, but god. Give Olivera an inch and he's gonna take a kilometer. Hive is on the way, Olivera. What? What a trade there. Actually, on paper, it doesn't look as good as it looked uh, as it broke through, but Raynor holds on to five bases and pretty much all of his drones. So while Olivera cut deeply, it's mostly superficial. Now, does he realize? So he doesn't have... Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, that's... You know, that's a real mind game. Wow, it worked! There's no way this is intentional, but I'm going to credit Rainer anyways. Olivera's making missile turrets to detect the burrow move roaches. But there's not even burrow because it was definitely a misclick. Like, uh, unless Rainer's playing 5D backgammon right now. Yeah, there's no reason you would go for burrow move over road speed, except to... Uh, so you, the reason Olivera knows about it is because they got their fancy new little uh, shiny horns there, whatever they are. I don't know how that helps them tunnel, but uh, there is the visual indicator of tunneling claws being done. And that's why Olivera is actually kind of backed off. So Raynor may have accidentally... And I, I'd be very happy... There's no, there's no way that was intentional. <laughs> Rainer may have accidentally bought himself a bunch of space with his fake tunneling claws here, because Olivera just, he's got to do, he's got to do something crazy. A tunneling claws? I, what, I haven't seen that in probably months. Like maybe the occasional mass roach game, maybe against dark or something. But Olivera's kind of backed off the entire map set up defenses against tunneling claws roaches and there's not even burrow <laughs> there's an ultraless cavern on the way and rainer will stabilize 90 drones he's so high on the drones again even with the, and he's making more but I, he can't stop himself oh no and that means that this army is just tearing through everything there's no splash tip. Where are the banelings? The zerglings are coming up. A plus two is done. The siege tanks are in position in between the bases. The heart of the swarm is under fire. And now the Terran army is just ripping through. Lings and banes trying to come up. A lot of the marines not healed yet. Banelings crashing through. Move command helping a blinding cloud to save the day. But how much light is left? The Ravagers helping to clean things up. The tanks. Oh, the Rainer's eating so much damage. I think that's it. I think Olivera has made good on that damage, that momentum he gained earlier. No amount of um, superficial tunneling claws or Ravagers and Vipers. Olivera has played a master class in Terran versus Zerg here. And Raynor just hasn't been able to keep up with the measured aggression. The decisive action. 50 supply with a Ravager Lang army isn't enough. 
a couple dozen banelings are not enough. Vipers will not be enough. Olivera will be taking it. Three. Um. Oh, I had that lined up so well, too. But Rainer lives. It was enough for now. But in comes another wave. Rainer sends another wave of Langs. The Queens to back them all up. But Oliveira keeps stimming forward. GG. WP. Respect from Rainer for Oliveira's top tier Terran. And he just played an incredible series. And honestly, more than his match against Cyril. That series really solidifies Oliveira's position as one of the top Terrans for me. Uh, against Cyril, anyone like able to go toe to toe with Cyril, but that could be a fluke. But that was just some incredibly solid Terran right there. Looking impossible once he gets any momentum to turn around. Rainer was so close several times. But Oliveira just held it together a little bit better. Well played by both sides. Some of the highest level and just exhausting gameplay. There's something different, something more frantic about that series and then Cyril versus Oliveira. I don't like it, it's just the constant scrambling to get something from both sides. <sighs> Ugh. Well, hopefully it made your day a little bit better. If you've got the means and motivation, be awesome. Check out Patreon, YouTube membership. But I hear liking and subscribing is still free for now. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't yet checked out the second channel for um, YouTube streams on winter gaming as well. If you want some more content, more hours in the day, be awesome if you do, yeah, do so. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.